And this one is <laughs> cosmic coral. Some really interesting techniques here and some amazing colors. So let's get to it. Hi guys, it's Mina. Welcome back. Today we are going to be doing something very fun, maybe a little bit of deep sea diving, looking for pearls. Um, I have been playing with this DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in pearl, and it's a beautiful, beautiful paint. I mean, it does some really cool things in terms of color. Because it's sort of a white color, it sort of softens everything a little bit, but the metallics in it, the pearl sheen to it, just gives everything this gorgeous luster. I'll show you what I'm talking about. These were a couple of test pieces I did the other day. I usually do test pieces on 12 by 12s. These are actually 14 by 14s and I like that. So anyway, you can see where this is with uh, pink tourmaline and uh, golden's violet, permanent deep violet. But the pearl really softened everything and gave it this like, this isn't varnished yet, but this beautiful metallic luster, which is really, really pretty. So. I'm not using the pinks today. Uh, I'll tell you what my colors are. They are the Pearl, DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in Pearl. I also have the 24 karat gold, DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in 24 karat gold. My paint is not super thin today. It is leaving a mound on a mound. So, and I will tell you why. So I have two pearls and my gold, and then I have Chroma Molten Metals copper. This is such a beautiful color though and it blends really beautifully with the pearl and gives this almost like salmony, peachy sort of very pretty effect. So I really like that. The next one is Windsor and Newton Van Dyke Brown and to darken it a bit I have added a shot or two of Golden's Fluid Acrylics in the Van Dyke Brown. This one is a little bit thinner than those but that's okay. Then my last color. This is Golden's Payne's Gray and it's leaving a mound on a mound. So my pouring medium is Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish and, uh, and I don't think I added any water to anything today. No water, Gloss Medium and Varnish, then the paint, then the Floetrol. Um, okay, so what we're going to do on this one is I want to use the navy or the Payne's Gray as sort of a, a background for a sort of an oceany feeling. So I'm not going to put that in my cup, I don't think. I'm going to pour my cup. I want to do several wandering ring pours and then I'm going to use some of my leftover color as background. So it should be really neat. Okay, so for this size canvas, this is a 30 by 40. We ended up needed, what did I say, like 40? 40 ounces of paint, 42 ounces of paint. So a lot of paint can go on this very comfortably. I have here a 12 ounce Dixie cup. Sorry about the jackhammering. Jackhammer Studios. That's what I might actually call this. <laughs> anyway, all right. So for my wandering ring pours that I'm going to do, I'm thinking maybe four or five, maybe one going that way, one going that way, or I might curve one. Let's see how it goes. But so let's prepare the cup for our first wandering ring pour. Um, I do want to start with a little bit of the brown. Now, do I want to do it as a layered cup or do I want to do it as a dirty cup? My paint is kind of thick. So I don't know if the dirty pour would be such a good idea. Probably better to go with the layered cup and uh, have our colors be separated because I do want that ring pour effect. Okay, yeah, so. Not going to do a dirty cup, layered cup. The next color I'm going to go with, I'm going to put a little bit of the gold in. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to put a little bit of the copper in first. Just down the side. And then I'm going to put, and I'm going to put the pearl in. Which one of these is thicker? This one is thicker. Okay. I'm going to go with a layer of the pearl because I do love that when the pearl combines with the copper is really, really beautiful. And the brown on the bottom is gonna give us that depth and that shadow that we really want. And then I'm gonna go with a little bit of the gold, just a little bit, not a lot, because that softens a lot with the pearl. Pearl is amazing. It's like this magic paintbrush thing. Okay, so now here's the question is, do I wanna put any of the Payne's Gray in the cup? 
I don't think I do. Maybe just a tiny bit, but I'm going to put some more copper in first. And then I'm going to put some more brown in. And some pearl. I don't really want to put the gold right next to the brown because when I've done that in the past, sometimes it gives it this weird, like, kind of deep army green kind of color, which is okay in certain places, but that's not what I'm looking for for this pour. I want this one to be softer and, I don't know, with the, the panes gray as sort of the background, I was sort of thinking, well, that's kind of deep sea and pearls, so maybe deep sea diving for pearls, and I don't know. It's a very pretty palette, though, you'll see. Okay, so now which way do we want to go? Let's start off with one going from maybe here to here. I'm going to move my cups out of the way. Keep your work area clean. Putting them out of my reach, so I'm not going to knock anything over. I have plenty of space for my canvas to move if I want it to. Okay, so I'm going to start maybe about here and just kind of come down this way with this. I'm going to do a wandering ring pour. So I'm going to pinch the end of my cup. And this is another reason I like these paper cups, because you can pinch the tip of it like that, and then it gives you a little funnel or spout to pour out of. Okay. So I might do, instead of just a straight uh, wandering pour, I might do areas of it that are a straight pour and then a few rings and then some straight pour and then a few rings. It's really cool. I saw Sarah Mack doing that the other night and it was really, really pretty. So thank you, Sarah. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. You see that beautiful blending of the copper with the pearl. And there's our Van Dyke Brown. There's the copper. Okay, so I didn't really travel very much, but, <laughs> but that's okay. So the end of your cup, I have realized you can do some really, really amazing things if you just slow down a minute and like see what's happening. And, and I dripped into it. But, <laughs> but if you... If you don't rush it, if you don't rush that last little bit of it, it's really pretty. So you can see in here, look, just this beautiful, when this stretches out, it's going to be so cool. All right, I'm going to fill the second one over here. So we're going to go almost the same thing, but not quite exactly the same order. So I'm going to pour my cup from the same spot, just the brown. I'm going to put pearl in this time. I have two cups of pearl so that I can use one for my background color. I'm going to put some of the copper in, then another layer of pearl, then some gold, then I'm going to do some more copper first, and then the brown again. So funny, I keep wanting to put that brown right next to the gold, but I know what will happen and I don't want it to happen. So. <laughs> okay, so that's that one. I'm going to put a little bit more brown on top just so it has that as the bottom layer. Okay, this one is a little fuller because I'm greedy. All right. Let's see if we can't go this way with this one. Alright, here we go. That's pretty. It's so cute. Can you get a close-up of that? It's beautiful. Okay, so I like that a lot. And as that stretches out, it's going to be really, really cool. So, let's see. This one, I think I'm going to... Because there's already some brown in the bottom of the cup, I'm just going to put a little bit of copper in first. And then the pearl. Move that out of my way because that's my background colors and I keep reaching for it. 
So now I have pearl in there. I'm going to put some gold in. And then a little more. No, let's go with the copper first. My hand keeps going to the brown one. This is actually going to be the last one, the side, so I might as well use up the paint. Yeah, this is not enough to do. Okay. So this one, we're going to go this way, sort of. See, because I didn't put more brown in first, it's this very pale, muted sort of, but that's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to grab my water real quick. So I have a cup of pearl over here for using as a background color. What are you doing? Okay, so this is still pretty thick. And since we're going to use it as a background color now, I'm going to thin it out a little bit. That's just water. And I had my paint pretty thick earlier, so that's better. It's thinner now. I want to make sure you stir it up really, really well. You don't want to have like the watery part on top and then at the very bottom this thicker stuff. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay, so that's thinned out nicely. I'm also going to thin out my gold. Because we are going to use these as flow extenders. That's still, well, yeah, that'll be alright. Alright, and then I have... This is pretty thick too, so I'm going to thin that also. I made it the same consistency as everything else because I wasn't sure if I was going to want to use it in the pour, but since I've decided to use it as the background color, I'm going to thin it out now. So having this next to that gold, the Payne's Gray and the gold, will give us sort of a, a deep sea effect and it will do sort of like a turquoisey color. So I'm actually going to try not to put too much of the blue next to the gold. I'm going to try to separate that with the pearl. So first thing I want to do is go around them with the gold. You see me checking consistency because it's important. Consistency is the most important thing for your pour. If your consistency is not right, you're not going to have a very successful pour. You're going to have to work really hard to save it. So I would rather double check it, triple check it, <laughs> and make sure it's right. Was it measure twice, cut once? Measure 16 times, cut <laughs> four once? Okay, so I'm just going to go around each of these with the gold, not in a very, very thick layer because I do want it to roll over there, to roll over the gold. That's so pretty right there. I love that one. I love copper. It's a gorgeous color. Especially this copper is really nice, the Chroma Molten Metals one, because it it still keeps its metallic colors, but it also will blend a little bit, especially with this pearl. 
I hope my mix isn't too thick to allow them to blend because I really do want them to. Okay, so now I did that. Now I'm gonna put some white, some of the pearl color in between. So now it is not leaving a mound on a mound. Now it is sinking straight through. Okay, we're going to come through here. Okay. And I do want to put some of this on my corners. Good. Good with that. Now, for Monsieur Payne's Gray. Hello, darling. How are you? Where's your stick? Oh, you're still a little thick, aren't you, baby? But that's okay. You're going to be fine. All right. So I'm actually going to use this. See how there's a, a full puddle of pearl there? And I'm going to put the blue right through the middle of that. go kind of like so it is touching the pearl I want it to touch that pearl color I want it to blend with that pearl color I'm gonna go through there too okay and I want a little bit of this this is I feel like what's gonna give it that kind of oceany feel we'll see We'll see how it goes. All right, that's good. I still have some gold left, so I'm gonna use that around the very edge again. So this is also now as a flow extender. And that's gonna allow our paint to slide around easily on the canvas. Notice I'm not putting a lot of the gold on the corners because I don't really want it to mix very much with the blue. All right, so I'm going to spread this out for a little bit. We'll do some movie. I can't snap. My snap is broken. Oh, okay. So I'm spreading the gold out mostly. It's okay if some of the blue gets in there. This is just to allow everything to move around. Almost there. Okay. All right, baby, here we go. Torchy! Let's torch this beautiful one. So there's some really cool parts over here. This just beautiful right in there. And then I love this. And I really love this. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go down that way first. But I'm going to torch it first. I'm going to have a brand new tank. She's feeling feisty. Here we go. So we're just popping any air bubbles. See these bubbles here in the blue? And the white is really pretty. This one had more of a straight pour in there. This one was more of a ring pour. There's still some cells coming up, so. Okay. Let's see how this goes. So thinking about it logically, it would probably be better to move the areas of paint that have a lot of paint on them to the areas that have less paint on them. Because I didn't travel as much with this one as I did with those two. So we're going to go off that way first. So let's pick this up and just see which way our paint wants to move. Nice and slow. why 
I always have my hair in a ponytail. It's flying in my face. I'm going to come back a little bit because I don't want to lose that, so I'm going to pull it back this way. I'm going to go down that way a little bit. And the slower you go, the more control you have over it. I'm losing a little bit of that rain, but... I'm not going to worry about this corner because I can always put something on top of that, but I want to get the weight of the paint down there to cover more of that part of the canvas. And there's more empty on that side, so we're going to go that way first. The paint's still sliding nice and easy. I'm going to go off that corner now. going to use some of my drips up here. Because this is going to help that paint slide down a lot easier rather than me fighting with it and fighting with it. So it's perfectly good paint. It's a little muddy, but it's okay. It's all going to slide off anyway. That's beautiful though. Okay, so let's tilt it that way off that corner. Now watch how easy it's gonna move. It's moving now. I wanna keep the navy on the edge. Sweet time. Okay. Woo. All right, so let's fix this corner too. What do I have left? I have curve left, that always works. And see, this is important. Don't ruin 90% of your canvas to fix one corner. Just put a little bit more paint on it. You know what I'm saying? Rather than stretch out this entire thing to get all the way to the paint down over here much better and safer to your painting to just put a little bit more paint on this corner instead of trying to move everything and stretch everything because it's already stretched out the paint's not moving that much anymore because there's not that much extra on here I'm gonna put a little bit of the copper in there too I'm just trying to get the edge covered now because that edge of the canvas looks different than the rest I love this that's so pretty and that's the copper and the pearl mixed I haven't torched it yet did we torch it? one time alright let's torch it again I like this though it's very pretty tilt it this way just a little bit to get some of this new paint to slide off and kind of incorporate in everything. There it goes. Also stretching out our top edge now. See the way the paint's still moving a lot. Go over that corner there. So now the top edge is stretched out. Stretch out this side now. Encourage any selling. I like that corner how it is. Let's test this a little bit. Stretch the paint out on this edge. Kind of open up some of those rings. Very pretty. Okay. So I like this navy through there. And I like this navy through there. I'm not so crazy about that big solid blob of gold through there. I think what I'm actually going to do is take my palette knife kind of go swimming in there a little bit and blend this a little bit more. And 
I know because this is the deco art. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, Americana decor series. It is going to kind of all smoosh together. So that's a different look than what I had happening before. This is real pretty over here. I can do a little bit more of that sort of feathery. Under the sea sort of coral growing. I love that he comes to hang out next to me. It's so cool. Here's my baby Zen. <laughs> He's very Zen. He's a very mellow cat. Okay. Yeah. Here's the other little one. Okay. I'm not sure I like this, but. I like it actually. <laughs> love you up now. Okay, so we seem to have like developed this branch of coral going up this way. I like. I wasn't sure how that's gonna work and it balances it. It balances that blue line, that navy going through that way, which is cool. This is so neat right there. I love that. And like all these cells and bubbles underneath. All right, so now that I'm done moving it, I'm gonna actually torch it one more time. And I'm not gonna move it again after this. I kind of like it, but it's something I'm not crazy about. I'm tempted to take a balloon and just <laughs> roll through there. I do like that technique, it's very useful. 
but I think at this point I've already blended it up with my finger too much and if I did that it would get really muddy so I'm not going to I'm just gonna leave it how it is and let it dry but I actually think it looks, looks really cool I like the pointy tips I like it when it's too round you can morph So, I call this one deep sea diving. <laughs> and hopefully the, well, I don't know, it may not stay deep sea diving, but I love that feeling of it. I do see that like very kind of coral feeling. Actually, I'm gonna play with this one. That's cool. I like it. All right, so I will trick you down. So don't freak out. If something like that happens. Just keep going. Fix it. giving me that's that that navy and pearl that I was actually really looking for in the beginning that I really wanted so thank you dear right. I like that actually a lot I'm just messing with it now so I'm gonna stop <laughs> I could play all day I'm gonna take you down and take some close-ups and post some stills. And when it's all dry and ready, we will post the video. Okay, so this is the dried result. And I absolutely love how this painting had turned out. I wasn't sure the first couple of hours after I finished, but then I came in the next day and looked at it. Hello, Zen. <laughs> and, um, I was just really kind of blown away because some of these areas where I was finger painting or using my painter's palette knife just came out really beautiful because it blended all those colors in together. I don't know if you can see how that's like shimmering and blinging in there with the gold and it just turned out really cool. I really, I think my favorite part is in here. It's right up in here with this band of coral and then you see the and dyke brown and you see the gold and the copper and that strip of Payne's gray. I just really love that area. So this one's really cool and you can see where that one pour is that was more of a straight pour with the ring pour at the end up there. I love that section. From far away it kind of reminds me there are like wheat growing in a field and you kind of see the sunset behind it but more than anything I just that copper is very Looks like coral growing under the ocean to me. So we did get the pearl. We did get the the Payne's gray giving us our deep sea sort of feeling. That's that section where the plastic flipped up. But it actually turned out pretty cool. So it's kind of metallic, but it's also very pearly luster. Just gorgeous. I really had fun with this one. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> and more than anything, I think that's so important to have fun with what you're doing to enjoy and let go and just kind of let your creativity flow it doesn't have to make sense at the time but it'll come together at the end hopefully <laughs> really neat i love how this is sparkling in the sun this little corner 
So, you know, don't be afraid to, to play with your art. Nobody said it has to be a perfectly smooth texture on top or it has to do this or it has to do that. It can be whatever you want it to be. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I sure did. <laughs> and I hope that you have some fun with your work. You know, if you feel like you don't like this all started because I didn't like this one section of solid gold that was in there. And I did love it before I did this, but I like it a lot more now, if that makes any sense. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to see more examples of my work, you can check it out at Mina Villegas Art on Facebook. Um, please like and subscribe if you have not so that you get notified whenever I upload something. We've got some really neat stuff coming up for you guys. So thank you again for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.